you and I kind of bickered about this years ago, many, many years ago, this whole idea of the multiple directors, which, yeah. you know, we hear that and we laugh, mm -hmm. nothing personal, mm -hmm. but we, you know, to <laughs> us, a shoot is a military operation. Right. I'm the director, right. I speak to my DP, I don't talk to anybody else, all the crew deals with the DP. Yeah. No way. Yeah, well, you, th this, <laughs> this is a generational all. difference yeah. in filmmaking. Yeah. It's like a discussion. I mean, I just went to Costa Rica with three other people, all of which have worked in films, and I was the director, and have been officially, yeah. you know, and everybody had been director. But then we would be in a scene and someone would go, you know what, I don't think that's going to cut. And then I would go, oh, really? Why? And then at some point, somebody would have an idea for a scene. I'd say, yeah, why don't you direct that one? Yeah, but doesn't chaos ensue at no. a point? No, never. It can. It's how. dangerous, but it's... It depends you know, who you choose who you work with. I mean, I, I handpicked those people that went on that shoot with me yeah. because I knew that everyone... Then, at the end of the day, as you start editing and you're the one that decides on the final cut, I mean, if it's like they shot an extra scene that they weren't planning on and if it turned out great, she's the one that decides to leave it in or she's the one that decides to cut it. I don't know. Here's where I'm never going to be able to understand that. We're just going to be on different sides of the fence. I remember one time we were on a shoot. Now our shoots were bigger and there was a grip that had said something to a client and all of a sudden the client came back to the producer and the producer said to me, what if we did this? I'm like, that's not what we talked about. We're doing this. Mm -hmm. And they're like, that guy over there suggested it. It was like the, the whole thing came yeah. apart here. I'm like, w why is he speaking to him? Why is he talking to him? Yeah. The, yeah. You know, we have a, we, well, but it's a little different. But you had a lot to get done on a given day. Don't yeah, you? Is, well, no. Awesome. Generally, when I start my films the first two weeks, we maybe shoot a scene a day and we maybe shoot for two or three hours a day. And most of that time is spent hanging out and bonding and talking about ideas and everybody throws stuff into the mix. And so the first week goes by very casually with very little work and shooting. The second week gets a little more intense as the ideas start to come in. But by the third week, it, it locks in. We know exactly what we want to do. We sort of have created a, a list of the scenes that we want. And that's when I assume more of a director role in that kind of way. Well, I also, I also think that in, in this case, there is still one director. There may be a, a heightened sense of collaboration throughout the production. You're doing the same stuff he's doing? But at the, no, but I'm just saying at the end of the day, there's still one director. And it's you. And on your film, I think that the one director is you. Well, right. We, yeah. And like, so I, that's established beforehand. I mean, everybody yeah. knew that I was going to be directing and stuff like that. And, and there might be, I mean, there was certainly arguments and things during our shoot and people would say, what do you think? And then it was uh, my job to sort of mediate that and, right. and make it. Yeah, but when you eventually say, I'm going to do this, isn't somebody pouting in the corner? That happens. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, we had that, but then it's like, I just don't know to how somebody, to explain it to you. It's just yeah. a totally different way of making a film. I mean, even in an edit, when you say to sure. someone, what do you think? And they're like, I like this. And then you go, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Then, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's almost like you can't even ask because then you get into this thing where they're, they're pissed off and it's right. like you got someone pouting. You're not getting 100% out of them anymore. I guess I'll say it from my point of view. When I have not been the director and I'm more a, like a subordinate or supporting position, I am not as attached to, I mean, I still want it to be awesome. I'm still going to give it my all, but I'm not as attached. So if I say, I think it's better like this, and they go, mm, and they do it the other way, I'm like disappointed for like a heartbeat, and then I move on. That's you. Because I'm like, it's your project. Great, let's work together. That's one, I, I never met anyone like that. The thing is, too, is like, I think those like arguments or this fight or the person pounding in the corner, I think it's worth it. You know, it's also a totally different style of filmmaking where we weren't really sure what the story was when we went down there. Yeah, that's and, different. And, you know, and if, if I had said, like, I don't want any of your ideas, you guys just do what I say, here's, you know, here's what we're going to do, I wouldn't have made the same movie because so many of the cool things that we shot were other people's ideas. Yeah, I don't know how Hollywood would respond to this. <laughs> that would, that's different. I mean, they want to, yeah, like... They can't, here's the yeah. thing. Can't Hollywood can't works. even right. approximate it. The no, only way right. Hollywood could deal with it is to let us make the movies exactly how we make them and then buy them when they're finished. That's, yes. I yeah, agree. They're not good at that. See, if I were working for Hollywood, though, which I'm not, <laughs> thank God, I would be trying to speak to this generation. Mm -hmm. Even though you're not theaters. part of the generation, you would be trying to make a movie for this generation? Yeah, I'm a marketing guy. Man, I, I want to make money. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm a businessman. I've always been a businessman. I thought they've given up on us, though, because we don't go see movies in the theaters, according to them. Go oh, Great. Let them give up on you. <laughs> I think you guys could make a ton of money. I think you could show up Hollywood. We're in the process of kind of figuring out how we're going to do that. You know, maybe the web is the way. 
I don't care. The web is an avenue, and see, and this is where I think new technologies are what we're waiting for. Because I do think that if like theaters got more loosened up and it was about generating audience and knowing that you could drive an audience to a theater, that then it would become more for people like us. And I do think that it's moving in that direction. Yeah. Because the idea that you can program things digitally in a theater, like in one night, and instead of having like, oh, this movie's playing here for four or five weeks, it's more like, actually, we just found out that there's like 500 people in this local area that have all seen this thing on the internet, but they're all really huge fans of it, and they actually want to see it on a big screen. So we're gonna mm -hmm. book that tonight, and the next night, something else. And I think that the big problem is, actually, those technologies are still in the process of being developed. And right. I think we're gonna see a lot of innovation as the economy starts to get worse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We call it, you know, gathering spaces. In medieval days, people would go to the town center and that's where they would find stuff. Mm -hmm. You live in New York. Mm -hmm. You go, if, you, if I want fabrics, I go to the garment district. That's a gathering place, okay? A movie theater is a gathering place. The internet is a gathering place, okay? Yeah. When people gather, you have to figure out how to extract the money out of them, okay? That's right. the nasty, ugly business part. People are gathering on the internet and yet people can't seem to figure out how to get the money out of them. Right. Because the precedent was set early on that the internet is free. I don't think that they should are... try to gather don't, money on the internet. Yeah, you're, you're thinking inside the box, okay? No, I'm thinking, ha I'm thinking the way that I use the internet is I hate to pay for things on the internet. And I don't. Because when I things. first started using the internet, I didn't have to pay for anything. So then okay. suddenly, when they started accepting credit cards and charging money for things, I was like, what, ha I, what happened? I used to get this for free. Why am I paying for it now? Okay, so let's... So, so then what I did was... <laughs> It's still out there for free somewhere. How do I find it? Okay, yeah. fine. I, I am hearing you, okay? You want it for free. <laughs> so let's start on the basis that you get this for free. Yes. What we need to do now is we have a gathering space, and it's a niche gathering space. You have a very particular type of person that comes and watches these things. What we have to do is get money other ways. Not necessarily. Like advertising. No, no, it's that you're thinking okay. outside the box. You're in the box. I want you to get in a box, three boxes down, <laughs> seeing you in your box and seeing your husband in his box. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's too conceptual. <laughs> yeah, the the, the pro and here's the, here's the the inherent problem. You have filmmakers trying to figure out how to make money when they're really not business people. Right. I mean, they're not even very good at budgeting and figuring out how to make a movie, which is a fairly simple business proposition. So what we need to do is we need to have businesses figure this situation out. I think that every single business in America should have a television program, like The Gap. If you walked into The Gap, not necessarily you, I take that back, if I walked into The Gap and I said to them, Let's say you had a program, a really cool kind of program where people every single week came back to your website. We don't want to charge anybody for this entertainment, mm -hmm. but I think literally that every single niche market, Delia is, is a store for, you know, 13 yeah. to, no, saw, yeah. and The Gap, and American Girl, and things like this, should have their own program. Okay, so what I'm hearing, and I like this idea, is that you're thinking that larger corporations should basically become the sponsors the way that Leonardo da Vinci had a sponsor in that they say, hey, Joe Swanberg, I'm going to film a web series and it doesn't have to be about my stupid clothes. No, you can't do that. You guys are way too savvy. Right. It, it's like it this show. Whatever you want it to be, we just want our logo at the end and for it to be no, like brought to you. I don't even do that. No. It's sitting on the Gap store. The whole point is, okay, look at this video. What is the purpose of this video? Mm -hmm. Some people that come to, to watch this video will buy some of my products. Most won't. Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever. It brings X amount of people to my meeting place, my gathering place on the web. See, a friend of mine has this uh, internet radio station, and I mean, he tells me how many people go to his radio station. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Wow, you get a million people there. What are you selling them? Nothing. I'm like, wait, so you gather all these people together and you're not selling them anything. He's like, they have no money. I said, <laughs> sell them soap. That's the problem with our audience. <laughs> no, that's not true. Do you eat? Do you use soap? Yeah, I do. I need to sell you what it is you buy. You see, this is business. You got to think. You buy sure. things. I, you bought those buttons. You bought that sweatshirt. You bought that shirt. I don't... Uh... They were given to you. Somebody bought them. <laughs> Somebody bought them. Okay. Yeah. Well, I see, I agree that the, it, things are going to move in this direction, but I think what's going to have to happen is that most of the places that are working on marketing at big corporations right now 
are really worried about offending people. Like every time I've had to work on something corporate, it's like they'll have an idea and it's a pretty good idea. You write a script for it and then in the script somebody trips and they're like, oh, well the guy that trips is, you know, an ATM worker and we wouldn't want to offend ATM workers. Yeah. Like something just bizarre. Like something that would never offend anyone. Or if you're gonna make anything good, you're gonna have, probably have to offend a couple people. And like I think that's the biggest problem with getting corporate sponsors is that they're really terrified of nudity, of swears, mm -hmm. of um, anything remotely edgy. Now we go back to the previous discussion about art. Which yeah, is I... when the president of Gap calls and says, mm, "I want you to change some of these edits." I didn't say this was going to be art. This is interesting. Right. I said this was going to be business. Yeah. Which is why I don't have any money, because I want to be an artist, not a Okay, person. but maybe you could may have a series. I mean, sure. even when we look at lots of Hollywood personalities that are doing, I would some of them are doing art, I would say, and mm -hmm. some of them are also doing advertising as another form yeah. of revenue. Yeah, and they or they keep yeah they do both you and know. keep those worlds sort of separate. Yeah, and Da Vinci did Most both. Da Vinci yeah. made paintings probably that were you know he did drawings. He wasn't consigned to do those, yeah, and then he was commissioned to do work. So I mean it yeah. you, it gets back to what we said before. It's a combination. You got to live. Yeah. But that's why my approach to it now is to try and do my art projects all small enough that I can make some money from them so that I can only do the art projects right. and never have to do the commercial So you product. build your audience and it has nothing to do and with it. No one's going to dictate It's you. slow, yeah. you know, and it comes and goes too. With the five films that I've made so far, some have bigger audiences than the others. So it's not like it's a continual growth kind of thing. Each project is its own sort of hit or miss thing. But they're all small enough budget that, that none of them would break me if they Exactly. Yeah. No, and I, I, and that's a nice business model you have. Yeah. Who's going to market her ice cream? There you go. So now, and you don't care. You can have nudity. Yeah. You know, you know. tons of it. Nudity is so, better. So the point is, but, but one of the things I think we're learning is that people will buy something. Mm -hmm. And what we need to do is we need to gather people and we need to find out what we're selling them. But it's not the film. Yeah. Your generation doesn't want to pay for the entertainment. Right. So putting it in the movie theater might not be the ideal solution because that's expensive to watch it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.